Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Times flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgebeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgebeer. Hello. We've had several conversations on this show about UFOs, ETs, and NASA's new pet name, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. But we've never had the opportunity to have a serious and thoughtful conversation with someone who has personal knowledge of their past lives on another planet. Until today, that is. Judy Carroll is an author whose conscious awareness spans two planetary connections, both Earth human and Zeta Gray. Her mission as a blended soul, now incarnated as a, an Earth human, is to be an interplanetary ambassador, introducing more clarity and deeper understanding of what has happened on this planet in the past, offering understanding of present time global events and providing guidance on how to heal our future as a planetary civilization. The author of several books about her lifelong connections to the Zeta Grays, including The Zeta Message and Human by Day, Zeta by Night, Judy uh, Carroll joins me now to discuss her latest book, Extraterrestrial Presence on Earth, Lessons in History, which offers a unique perspective on the eons of Earth, earthly ET contact, both genuine and falsified, and exposes the real origins of what we now call fake news, how ancient events that are still controlling Earth are inhibiting our natural evolution, and the behind-the-scenes strings attached to modern-day situations. Judy Carroll, welcome. Thanks very much for having me, Sandy. It's lovely to be here. Judy, you were born in Australia in the 1950s. Tell us a little bit about your early life. Yes, um, as you say, I was born in Australia, Queensland, Australia, in the early 1950s. Um, with, I, I obviously very carefully chose my parents, as we do. Our parents were born into as a pre-birth choice. And knowing the mission that I had ahead of me, uh, and the fact that I was going to have contact with my ET family from a very early age, I think I was very lucky in the, or sensible in that I chose parents who were able to handle the situation. Because as many people who have so-called star children these days are coming to realise they're not always the easiest children to raise <laughs> because of their extreme sensitivity. Um, and the lower vibrational energy down here on planet Earth. So um, my parents were always very understanding and patient with me. I actually went through a lot of problems as a child with anxiety going to school because the education system here is very, very, or at least it was back then, very primitive. I think it's improved a bit now. Um, but I remember having a grade one teacher who had a, what we used to call a, um, like a feather duster and she used to hit us with it or lambs or uh, duster I think it was and she used to use this as a cane on children of five years old um, so you know that was no incentive for us to enjoy school or to learn um, yeah. and with my sensitivity from coming from an off-planet culture I found that really really hard but you didn't know that you were from an off-planet no, culture did I, you until much I later didn't. I didn't. I actually went through a lot of fear as a child because I was um, unconsciously aware. I'm not saying consciously aware. I only had a couple of conscious um, experiences. But on a subconscious level, I was aware of these beings coming into the house, taking me, connecting with me. And I had um, a fear as a child of this. I always needed a light on at night when you know, going to bed. My mum used to have to sit with me. This went on until I was about 10 years old and I'm, I was embarrassed about it until I've now I've spoken to others down here who've been through the same thing. 
But I actually chose this lack of consciousness on purpose because the work I'm doing now is helping people to understand that yes, it's natural for an earth human being to be afraid. It's, it's just a physiological um, reaction our body has to a being that looks different, particularly ones like the greys. And so there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, but at the same time, I'm trying to help people to understand that there's really nothing to fear. If you mm. can just um, stand back a little bit and allow the contact experience to happen, you'll be able to move past the fear barrier. Well, we talk, we talk about contact a little yeah. bit later. I want to know what actually triggered your awakening? What was the moment that woke you up and you had this sudden realisation you were not holy from here? Oh, look, it didn't happen until I was 30 years old. Um, up until then, I, it, it's really hard to explain because it was like on some level of my being, I was aware of feeling different. Um, even like through my teens, I, I never wanted to go to discos and things because the, the flashing lights and loud music I couldn't cope with. Um, it, I just, I just knew I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't quite normal. But at age thirty, I had a full-on daytime encounter with my grey family. Um, up until then, I'd thought of them as being of the Devic Kingdom. I knew they weren't human. Um, by the time I was 30, I'd sort of moved past the fear thing because they'd started making contact with me when I was about 15. And I was aware of them providing me with help. But having that daytime, full-on, face-to-face encounter and recognising one of them as the te a teacher that I knew, that was when I fully moved past the fear, recognised them as family, and it all took off from there. Now, was that a happy recognition or was it a oh, scary recognition? Oh, extremely happy. It actually started about a week before during what I thought was a dream and I connected with this teacher that I'd been aware of influencing me right from early childhood. Um, I was just aware of this helpful influence from outside of myself and we were standing on banks of a stream and he was talking to me at length and I knew he wasn't an earth human. Um, I, I don't think he was letting me see him in his full grey form but I was aware of a different energy with him and he was um, explaining something to me which I found out later was the fact that they were going to come in a week later and he was going to download part of his own consciousness which is part of my own consciousness because he's a high part of myself anyway, as our ET contacts usually are. And this um, download was going to take place. But he had to ask my permission before he could do it. And so this was what this very long, profound conversation was about, gaining my permission, explaining to me what they were going to do, and just sort of reassuring me, hey, it'll be okay. Um, he reassured me that I wouldn't, like in some Morgan cases, um, the person actually forgets their whole childhood and everything that's happened up until, the, until that point. Whereas he said to me, no, look, it's just a higher part of your own self, your ET self that we're downloading. So you'll retain your earth human memory. You'll still be who you are, um, but you'll just be able to access a higher um, amount of consciousness, a deeper level of consciousness. Mm. Um, and sure enough, I, I actually forgot what our conversation was about until the following week when I found myself in this situation face to face with this teacher and a couple of others and it suddenly occurred to me, ah, okay, this is what we were talking about. Yes, it all came back. Um, so, so what is it like to live with a full awareness of other realms, you know, and you're living here, living a normal daily life to all intents and purposes, having to survive here? It's not easy. Sure. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, luckily, I have a good support network behind me. I've since connected to a lot of my other ET family who are doing the same thing. So we all sort of keep each other supported. Luckily, I'm married to a, a husband who's very understanding of the whole thing. So he doesn't have a problem with it. I can carry on my work. Um, and I think that's, that's what it is. And this is why people now contact me after these interviews who are going through the same thing. And I realise that that's what my job is, is to be a bridge so that others can contact me and 
be reassured that it's hey, it's okay. Yes, it is hard down here. Um, we have to take very deep breaths at times. Um, one of the things that I was strongly advised to do by the Greys in that contact experience that day was A, to learn meditation to help communication because they don't communicate verbally, they communicate telepathically. So they said, you need to learn meditation. But because I'd been a professional dancer up until then, I found just sitting in meditation very hard. And so the other piece of advice, which truly is the best advice anyone's given me, they said, learn Tai Chi. Now back then, 1983 in Australia, <laughs> I didn't even know what Tai Chi was. So they explained to me, it's like moving meditation or moving yoga. Mm -hmm. And um, the opportunity then came up, things changed for me dramatically over the next three years. We were actually living out on acreage um, and we had to move back to town, which I've been told during the contact was going to happen because they said you have to be in town to be able to do these things, to be able to learn Tai Chi, learn meditation, etc. Uh, so that happened and just all fell into place very naturally. And um, it all took off from there. I found Tai Chi classes just around the corner. Uh, someone moved next door into a rental house who was a meditator and her teacher had just moved up from down south and starting a meditation group. Uh, and this was all within a year of this moving back to the city. Mm -hmm. So everything that I've been told has come to pass more, you know, better than I even get, thought it would. So when did you decide to go public with this information and why? That, that was a hard decision to make. Um, I actually wrote a book from the fictional perspective, but you know, it's, it's actually based on truth. Um, and it turned into a couple of books. I was actually told that I needed to start writing books. The Greys told me I needed to start writing books from, the hu uh, from their perspective rather than from the human perspective. And I did that. And I managed to get it taken up by a subsidy publisher here in Queensland. Um, but unfortunately, they weren't on Amazon. So, you know, sales were very, very limited. There was very limited marketing. And we heard about Granite Publication in America and we contacted them and they said well send us the books which i did um and they read them and just loved them took them up but we the whole thing was rewritten as the zeta message and that's a combination of these books i was reading and my other book human by day zeta by night is also sort of taken from these original books that i wrote um and it, it took a lot of courage to go public with it but um granite were great to work with um, and the um, agent that I work with, publicity agent, is fantastic to work with. Um, so it hasn't been that bad. <laughs> so you've been increasingly frustrated at the accusations and the negative information being banded around about the Zeta Greys. Um, and you say that you are part of them. I don't know yeah. what the difference between the Zetas and the Greys is, but you can tell us that. But the main point I want to make is why have we been told that the greys are evil and to be avoided at all costs? Okay, the greys, um, I'll just explain this a little bit more. I just use the term greys to describe or refer to all the insectoid humans in the universe. And there are many, many, many races of greys. Uh, they're insectoid as opposed to Earth human mammalian. That's, that's the only difference. Um, but they are in human form. And the Zetas are one of the grey races who happen to live in the Zeta reticulum star system. So it's like you know, a French person lives in France and an Australian person lives in Australia. It's just different nationalities, basically. Um, now, what my uh, extraterrestrial presence on Earth book is about is about an ancient Earth human reptilian race that was developed down here during the time of the dinosaurs which I refer to as Reptarians, because I'm trying to make it clear they're not off-planet reptilian, reptilians, they're from here. They're a much older Earth human race. Now, what people need to understand is modern-day humans have been around for about 60 to 100,000 years. The dinosaurs were around for 165 million years. So there was plenty of time for them to develop as a very, very advanced human race. Um, and at a point in history or prehistory, 
they actually hijacked the planet and created the modern day humans as a slave race developed out of the primate species. Now the reptarians are still very much present here, very much in control of the planet. They're the ones who are causing all the problems. The greys and other ETs are now coming here to try to help humans to wake up. It's, it's like, as one of the greys told me once, he said, it's like planet Earth is, was part of a flowing stream, but that part of the stream got pushed aside into a stagnant pool, whereas the rest of the universe has flowed on. And he said, it's time for Earth plane humanity to join back into the universal stream and evolve to the next level, ascension as they talk about. And that's why they're here, they're trying to <clears throat> allow this to happen. But if they do, the reptilian controllers are going to lose control because their whole control is about disempowerment. And that's what they're doing continually and have been doing right from the start. So that's why the greys and others are here. Um, <clears throat> the greys in particular um, play a very prominent role because an important part of the evolution of those humans is to come to understand that we have an etheric energy system underlying all the physical systems of our body. And this is what all the alternative healing methods such as Reiki, acupuncture, tai chi, etc, etc are all based on. And this is absolute really important information for people to understand and it was the greys who brought this to planet earth in the beginning so this is why they're so desperate to get this teaching across to people so you have said that there's a difference between genuine and non-genuine et contact when you talk about non-genuine are you referring to these this other race the yes. reptiles, did you call them? The controllers? Reptarians. Reptarians. Terran <coughs> Reptar yeah. from the Latin word for Earth. Rep okay. and reptilian. So reptarians. Yes, yes. So what yes, sorry. So some contact is actually them and not what we think is off planet. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Carry on. You were gonna say something. Yeah. Um Yes, uh, Dr. Stephen Greer talks about this at length. Um, the Reptarians are still very, very active behind all the governments. They're, they're behind both sides of politics, extreme right and extreme left. Um, they played the role of the God in the Old Testament, um, as well as some positive ETs. So this is why the God of the Old Testament sort of comes across very polarised, in some ways quite positive, in other ways quite negative. Um, and they, they're still around basically doing the same thing and they use divide and conquer to control people. Um, so going back to the Old Testament, God sending the different tribes of Israel out to fight and kill each other. Now they start up wars through politics and religion, so they're still doing the same thing. And through this divide and conquer technique, this enables them to keep control of earth plane humanity and they feed off fear. So they're, they're pushing the fear and drama and have basically made Earth humans addicted to fear and drama um, as opposed to being positive because we create our own reality through the way we think. So the more they can yeah. control us through fear and drama, the more they can keep us disempowered. And so are these um, controllers what some people refer to as archons? Ah, uh, yes, yes, and cabal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so... You also talk about, in your book, about um, uh, the greys being a creator race. What does this mean? What did they create? Were they involved in creating humans? Yes, um, it's, more, it's more the higher greys, the mantids, who are the creator race. They're very, very highly evolved beings, um, but are insectoids, so they're closely connected with the rest of the greys. Um, and they were one of the creator races who came to Earth. Um, they actually created a race that I refer to as the ant people, who have since evolved to the, the Zeta Reticulan star system. Um, and I can remember having a life as one of these ant people. And they worked very, very closely with the nature spirits. So they, the, all the greys, the insectoids, have a close connection with the Devic kingdom because the physical aspect of the Diva Kingdom is the insectoids, even on Earth. 
um, you, know, you have to think of ants and bees, etc., um, which are all such an important, important part of nature. And the ant people, going back millions of years, were known as the gardeners of the earth. And they were the ones responsible for assisting the, na the nature spirit to set up um, like ecosystems um, and bio systems to encourage a diverse um, uh, like animals and insects and birds, etc. Life forms on Earth. So tell us about what the Zetas are like and how they operate. I mean, I've heard that they have a hive consciousness with no free will. Is that true? No, it's not. No. What what the Zetas have at all grades, in fact, um, work through God consciousness as opposed to self-will or free will. But so it's sort of beyond God's will, I should say, rather than God, God consciousness, but God's will as opposed to free will. In that um, everything they do is for the good of the whole um, you know, culture. Whereas down here, we're very much self-centred. Um, there are people down here who are very God-centred, who do the right thing by everyone, but there are plenty of humans who don't, who couldn't give uh, two hoots about what's going on around them. They'll just do, it's, it's all me, 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 and, and, you know, that's the bottom line. Whereas with the, with the greys and, and the Zetas and all the rest of the greys, um, it's everything done is for the whole community. But yes, we do have free will. I mean, I, I work as a grey up on the ships, and so I'm consciously aware of being a grey. And I know we, we have free will. Um, they have an extremely good sense of humour because the sort of work we carry out is not easy. It's a little bit like, in some cases, it's like paramedics down here. And in fact, I can remember having done a few soul rescues in my grey form, and they were not pleasant. Um, so we do have a bit of a black sense of humour. Um, but no, very much free will. I mean, if someone told me up on the ship to do something I didn't want to do, I'd back up and say, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, I've seen people do that. No, that's not my job. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, so what does a soul rescue entail then? Um, if, if somebody dies in a state of fear, they can get trapped down here like a ghost. Um, so what we do, we go in and um, connect with them and help them through to where they need to be. Our ships are actually like interdimensional portals. And in fact, at the end of 2019, one of our people, I, I had a slight memory of it, but she had a full memory and we were discussing it. And as we talked, I remembered more. At the end of 2019, on one of our ships, we had an intake of so many Earth humans. They were just... The whole ship was just full. It was like a busy aircraft terminal. And we were guiding them to different portals, um, at, you know, gates to go through. And it was obviously a huge number of Earth humans who had passed over and we were helping them to go to where they needed to go to. And the next morning when we woke up and remembered it, we, we were, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? This is, this is incredible. You know, is there going to be a massive earthquake or something? And it wasn't long after that the COVID started, mm -hmm. um, which, of course, caused a lot of deaths. Um, and also there's so many natural disasters happening, which are also causing a lot of deaths, plus wars. Now, when you're up in the ship off planet, that time ceases to exist. So it's all in the now. So this is why we were having all this huge, huge, huge number of people coming through because it was a progressive, a progressive um, sort of clearing that was going on down here. Mm. Now, some people hearing you talk about ant people might be either shocked or in complete disbelief. But you say um, that the uh, they were actually mentioned in the ancient Vedic Mahabharata text. Yes. What do yes. you say about them? I actually haven't um, read it myself. I, I, I remember a quick mention of it in another Vedic text. Um, I think they refer to them as being uh, coming to earth to mine for gold. Now, I know that there's <coughs> talk about the Anunnaki creating human slaves for them to mine for gold, but that's a lower level. What they're talking about in the uh, Mahabharata as being gold miners is they're here to raise human consciousness. The old um, 
um, alchemical thing, you know, raising um, up uh, you know, raising human consciousness. Base metal into gold. Base metal, yes, yeah, to gold, yes. yes. Yeah, so that's yeah. what that reference is. Um, it's important for people to understand that there are, as our great teachers always said, he said, always look for three levels in everything. There's a lower level, middle level, higher level. You yeah. know, everything yeah. that's, that happens so is all three levels. You've written that there have actually been six human genesis. Genesis events on Earth, starting way back with fish or mer people billions of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yes, so yes, and and a bit about that. Yeah, well, again, because we perceive things through a timeline, so this, you know, to our history or, or lack of history, um, it's so far back. But because everything is happening in the now, this is the reason why sailors have seen these beings because they're still around, but in an alternative um, dimensional reality, um, which all the dimensions are right here, right now. So if there's a, a little bit of a portal that they can come through, uh, the Yeti are the same things. Um, they were an earlier human race that was created again out of the primates. Um, Loch Ness Monster is a, an example of something that comes through portals. So it's all here, but generally we can't see them. So yes, so, the mer people were a human race. So mer people are not uh, myths then? They're not myths, no. no. Mm. And they would still be in existence in another time frame. Mm. Okay, mm. we're going to take a short break now. You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer and my guest today is Interplanetary Ambassador, Blended Soul and author of the Zeta series of books, Judy Carroll. And we're talking about her book Extra Terrestrial Presence on Earth Lessons in History which offers a unique perspective on the eons of earthly ET contact both genuine and falsified. Still to come the real origins of now what we now call fake news the ancient events that are still controlling earth and inhibiting our natural evolution and the behind the scenes strings attached to modern day situations. Stay tuned. Om Times TV. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times flagship radio show, What Is Going On? And as an author, editor and 13 times book judge who's read thousands of books and interviewed hundreds of authors, I'm constantly asked what's really worth reading and what's not. So I created the No BS Spiritual Book Club to help you save time and money by picking the brains of discerning names who have walked this path before you. There's no catch, no fees and no BS, just an ever-growing library of 10 best spiritual book lists from some of your favourite authors and teachers plus free book excerpts, audios and video interviews with people like Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., David G., Lee Harris, Mark Nepo and more. From well-known classics to hidden gems you've never heard of, it's the only no BS guide to the best spiritual books to enlighten your journey of self-discovery. So why not join the club, get inspired and save money at the nobsspiritualbookclub.com. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. 
It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back. Judy Carroll, how many ET races have participated in the evolutionary development of humans? Oh, look, I don't know. I know that there are an awful lot. Awful lot. And some, <laughs> and some had good intentions and some didn't. That's right, yes. Um, the Anunnaki um, were a bit of a problem. They, uh, they teamed up with the Reptarians, uh, so they're part of the control. Um, scheme thing, the hijacking of the planet, um, but the majority were fine, the majority were helpful. Um, they were trying to intervene during the Old Testament times, positive ETs were trying to intervene, but ended up getting driven away from the planet by the Reptarians. And this is why there's evidence of major nuclear wars in places like the Gobi Desert where the sand has been turned to glass through atomic explosions. Um, mm. So they've been trying for a long time to help but the trouble, the problem is because we create our own reality, while Earth plane humanity is being tricked by the controllers, there's not an awful lot that the ETs can do. They can come here and talk, but they can't come in and actually change things. It's up to Earth plane humanity to do that. We have, they, they have to learn to think positive rather than negative. And so that's one, why ones like myself are here now, trying to point out to them what's actually been going on and, hey, it's time for you to wake up. Um, and in fact, often, often, often when people are contacted by an ET, that's the words that are said to them. It's time for you to wake up. Yeah. Well, I mean, looking at what's happening in the world today, even if people don't believe a word that you're saying, we certainly know that somebody is trying to assert control and, um, you know, further their own agendas through religion, through the media, through social media, through politics. That is very obvious. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, I don't think people realise the extent that it's happened. Um, mm. This is the problem. Well, uh, we, sorry. No, you can't. Uh, I was going to say, we, we actually had a um, meeting up on one of our ships back in 2011, just after I got my first two books, The a Message and Human by Day, Center by Night, published. Um, and they were actually asking for volunteers to... Um, do something down here to try and override the hijacking, and that was the word they used, the hijacking of the planet. And this was when I was asked to write my book, Extraterrestrial Presence on Earth. They said, oh, you're a published author, you know, how about you write about it? Um, yeah. <laughs> so how and when and where did the interference occur that is still impacting humanity today? Well, it's basically right from the beginning of when Earth humans were created as a human race out of the primates. They were created as a slave race to carry out mining work in what is now Africa. <clears throat> and then as far as I understand, other ETs came in and did intervene and took us, us, um, some of these ET mixtures, people call it. Put some of these mixtures aside in what's spoken of in the Bible as the Garden of Eden. And what they were trying to do, they were trying to um, insert more ET DNA to humanise them so they become more cosmic humans rather than animal humans. So that was what was going on then. But of course the reptilians didn't want that to happen. So, of course, they came in and interfered, and that's that Bible story, the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Um, was a reptarian who again messed with humans' DNA. Um, and I think it was not long after that that the actual ETs left. There wasn't anything they could do. So they left the planet. Um, and so this DNA interference has been what's held Earth humans back. Earth, Earth plane humanity is on the first level of what the ETs refer to as the human ladder, which is a... Um, a, a a series of levels, 10 levels, um, they call them galactic levels, but they're not galactic levels per se, they're not places, they're, they're just what they are, are expanding and deepening levels of conscious awareness. So here on planet Earth, Earth plane humanity is on the first level, so therefore we can access about 10% of our potential consciousness, and we have about 10% of our potential DNA activated 
scientists talk about the rest as junk DNA, which is about as far from the truth as you can get. As our, our human race evolves, they then move up to the second level, accessing 20% of their conscious awareness, 20% of DNA activated. So this is what evolution in the human kingdom is all about, is gradually coming up the human ladder, evolving up the ladder, and accessing more and more consciousness. Once we get to the top level of the ladder, where it's basically what people think of the angelic kingdom, we can access our full conscious awareness. So we don't have things hidden away in subconscious and superconscious. It's right here, full conscious awareness and our full DNA activated. And so this is what people are being taken up on the ships to have their DNA repaired. Okay, so many people think that they are being abducted because the ETs want their DNA for their own purposes, not that they are trying to help. Yes, well, it's a little bit of both because the ant people were actually interfered with very, very badly by the reptarians. And so some of the greys also need help. So um, the higher universal governing body um, organised that there would be an exchange of DNA to assist some of the greys to become, come back more to being more human and emotional, help them to access emotions more and help Earth humans the other way to help to calm their emotions more. So it's a, a, a two-way exchange helping both races. How, how can our own human enlightenment um, be aided by contact with otherworldly beings? Oh, look, it's huge because one of the big things that holds us back in our evolution is what my publisher jokingly refers to as cosmic racism. Humans are terrified of anyone who looks different. Uh, you've only got to look at all the racism that goes on down here between countries on Earth. Um, so, um, Contact with an ET, particularly one like the Greys that looks really different, is a way of helping people pass this fear barrier of difference, um, trying to help people to understand oneness more. Um, <clears throat> an understanding of reincarnation is also really important here. This was taken out of the church teachings. Um, Jesus spoke about reincarnation and was removed. But understanding that you've had lives in many, many countries on earth, You've been Christian, you've been Muslim, you've been um, you know, atheist, you've been um, Protestant, whatever. You've had lives. You've been an American, you've been English, you've been German, you've been Chinese, you've been Japanese. Um, and when people start to open up to this, they start to gain more empathy with people who are of different races and different religions. Whereas if you don't um, understand or accept reincarnation, then you don't, you don't understand that oneness aspect of it, which is so important um, to overcome warfare down here. Mm. Was Jesus an alien? Yes. Yes, very, very highly evolved ET. From? I'm not exactly sure where he was from. Um, I have heard he was Pleiadian. He probably was Pleiadian because they were the ones who had the most influence down here. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. In my book, Extraterrestrial Presence on Earth, I've presented um, a version of the Lord's Prayer that was translated from the original Aramaic that Jesus spoke. If you'd like, I can read it out. It's very, very different to the Lord's Prayer that we say in church. Would you Go like ahead. Go okay. ahead. Okay. What I'll do, I'll read out uh, it line by line with the line that we say in church and then the Aramaic original translation under it. So we start, Our Father who art in heaven, this is our one absolute eternal being of which we are born forth from the realm of the all and the only. Hallowed be thy name. I am empty within the ecstasy of your presence and the purity of the vibration of your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Empower my creative expansion through your emergence from the unseen realms as I realise our life and will as one. On the manifest earth as in the unmanifest heavenly realms. Give us this day our daily bread. 
provide the nourishment of authentic insight and realization through me now and in each present moment. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Release the echoes of my hidden past as I cancel all of my concerns with others. Do not let me lose my true self in forgetfulness, but wholly release me from the errors of my perception. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. For the undivided holiness is the absolute, the all and the only. And the power of our eternal radiance from cosmic gathering to cosmic gathering, from age to age, from moment to moment, from now to now. May these pure intentions be the rooted, fertile earth centre from which all my actions flow. Amen. Quite a difference. Very, very different. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, um, you talk about levels of, uh, you know, one could call it soulfulness, um, you know, yeah. ascendancy, I don't know. Yeah. Soul connection. Levels. Soul connection. I mean, with some of some extraterrestrials are very highly evolved beings now i heard recently about extra celestials and ultra terrestrials and the extra celestials are supposed to be much more kind of diaphanous um you know they're not as dense as we are they have a glow about them they have a great love for god if you want to call you know, all that is, oneness. that word, oneness, yeah. I mean, are they angels? The, the angels, that we, what we think of as angels, we've actually created angels in our own image, just as we've created God in our own image. Um, but yes, there are, are many of the, what I just refer to them as ETs, but they're interdimensionals as well, right up the top of the human ladder that are like that. Many of the mantids are. Um, when I think of angels, I think of the mantids um, because I think war is great. Um, but yes, they are. They, they have an absolute glow about them. Um, once you've reached about the third or fourth level of the human ladder, you're, you do move past the need for physicality. Uh, and this is the reason why with most of the greys who are coming here have trouble with verbal speech because they're past physicality. And this is why they generally don't just appear down here in physical form. You've got to be in a slightly altered form to be able to see them because they're vibrating at a higher frequency. Um, this is this is actually partly the reason Reiki draws them in um, <laughs> because Reiki is a very high energy and the ETs love it. So my co-author of the Zeta message, Helene Kay, uh, she had her first ET encounter with a tall grey um, after the family had been attuned to Reiki and it was the energy that drew them in. I've heard of a few people having um, their first session of Reiki and then having a Kundalini awakening or some other mm. kind of awakening straight afterwards. Yeah, yes, it raises your vibrational frequency, the attunement process that you go through. Um, and this is this is why you've really got to go and learn under a Reiki master. You can't do it online. It's, it's no. a hands-on thing. Um, and yes, it raises your vibrational frequency of your energy body to a higher level. Yeah. That's the whole key to it. Uh, there's protection symbols that are placed into the energy system. So the perspective on God, religion, spirituality, the cosmic perspective, um, do all beings from all places other than the uh, controllers um, revere God and do they regard God as oneness, as the universe, as consciousness? What's their view? Yes, what the, the term that my great teachers like to use is for God is universal consciousness. And this universal consciousness flows through all of us, every sentient being in the universe. Um, so it's it's not like religion says, you know, you know you've got to follow such a religion to, to have a connection with God. We, we all have a connection with God. Um, that's the bottom line. Um, but it's up to us to open up to that connection. And it is, it's consciousness, universal consciousness. And why is that revered? Uh, because it's of a higher, very high energy frequency. Um, 
so yes it's it's so it's so pure it's it's beyond polarized energy and of such high purity and it's total love it's another word for love when we talk about unconditional love that universal consciousness so um this, i'm just trying to you know join some dots in my head here uh jude carriven cosmologist she talks about consciousness she says consciousness is not what we have it's what we are and the whole universe is conscious which means yes. that presumably every universe is conscious yes 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 and, and what i think of as god is the the super glue that holds the whole universe together hmm. and would you say that super glue is the high frequency emotion of love yes yes it's, it's the energy of love energy of unconditional love it's as simple as that mm. and in her book awakening to our cosmic heritage mary rodwell has said that ets contribute to the new humans who she refers to as the star children what can you tell us about that oh yeah yes yes well they are they're a new generation of um <coughs> children who have come out of the contact experience is a hybridization program that's being carried out between the greys and other ETs and Earth humans. Um, and these children are being born with more activated DNA. Um, I know in, in Mary's book, uh, The New Human, I think it's called, um, she talks about this, that scientists are actually starting to find children with this higher DNA um, amount that's been activated so these are the star children who are coming in and they've been starting to come in since about the 1960s so i mean are you saying then as hybrids that their parent has been had some form of contact and yes. may, may not even know about it yes very much very oh, likely contact generally it carries down through families um, I suspect my mum had contact. She wasn't consciously aware of it. Um, but just a couple of things she said, I, I suspected that she had. It. Um, so this is how I would have ET DNA in me through my mum. And you say that um, that uh, the anyone who has uh, an experiencer, anyone who has contact, has actually unconsciously agreed to that. Yes, I have. I have. The only contacts that haven't been agreed to are what we refer to as the MyLab, the military abductions, where these fake greys are being used, the PLFs, the program life forms that Dr. Stephen Greer talks about. And they've actually been created from uh, the genetic material taken from genuine ET bodies that have crashed, you know, in the ship crashes. They've taken those bodies and created sort of life forms out of them but with reptarian genetics in them as well. Um, and these are the only negative grades that are, that are resident down here. These ones being used in the my labs. Mm. They're actually controlled with, with um, implants and things. So if the um, controllers have been here for so much longer, they must regard this planet as theirs. <laughs> oh, yes. you know, and we're just whatever we are um you know meaningless i would imagine but Wait. perhaps but perhaps getting getting you know to be a bit of a nuisance to their you know long term plans um you know what are the chances of humanity counteracting that completely their influence well, the thing is, is what one of my ET teachers said once, he said, there's a version of Earth to suit everybody and we create our own reality. So I think what will happen event, through reincarnation, some people will come back to a higher version of Earth where we are more in control of our destiny and others will come back to where they are now. It all depends on how we, we think. Are you, able, oh, are you able to spot um, hybrids or, you know? Yes, I generally can, generally can. So I imagine there's a number of prominent people who are being um, targeted, you know, right now as definitely not being from this planet. I mean, have you looked at any of those prominent people and said, yes, you're definitely not from here? Um, 
it's a little bit hard to do it unless you connect with them face to face. I find it a little bit hard to just pick it up. I can pick up where there's negative energy coming in, um, definitely, just watching them on TV. Some some of these politicians, I just have mm. to leave the room. <laughs> I can't yeah. stand it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a little bit hard to pick it up until you actually speak to the person. Yeah. The behind-the-scenes strings attached to modern-day situations that you talk about, um, are you talking about the wars? Are you talking about the way media is being manipulated? Are yeah. you talking about, um, uh, you know, um, all the misinformation that is being yeah. shared? And yeah. that is all coming from the controllers. Yeah, all coming from the controllers. If you had all to put it, to cause fear. If you had to kind of put some kind of percentage on it, you know, what's the percentage of humans versus controllers? Oh, I, I don't really want to say because I don't want to sort of put things into people's minds. It's a, it's a very individual thing um, to choose to tune in or not to. Mm. Um, unfortunately, just sort of looking at the news, it seems to me that the majority of people are being sucked in by them, but at the same time there are more and more people waking up. Mm. So there's certainly more awakening now than there would have been, say, 20 years ago. Some researchers, you know, claim that the um, increase in UFO or U UAP appearances are a strategy, a strategy that, you know, it's intentional. They want to be seen because they want to open their minds to the idea that there is more to reality. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Um, but at the same time, people need to bear in mind that some of them are from down here. The controllers um, have developed their own ships that, people think are UFOs. A lot of the physical UFOs you see are actually from down here, especially when they're around military bases. So um, how, how are we to know? I mean, if we... Oh, it's very hard, very, very hard. Stephen Greer talks about this. Um, one of his, I think, he had a press conference going back a, a few months now, and he was talking about it. Um, but yes, it's very, very hard to tell. Mm. So we just have to what? hold, yeah. hold yes. our own in faith yeah. Yeah. and not allowed ourselves to be sucked in by all of the... Yeah, yeah. Just to bear in mind that if there's any aggression on the part of the, of the UFO, it's not a genuine UFO. Okay. You know, if it starts chasing pilots and things like that, genuine UFOs don't do that. Okay. Okay, well, we're out of time now, Judy. We could talk about this a lot more, but we, we just don't have the time. So thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me, Sandy. It's been a real pleasure. You're welcome. So the books by Judy, the five books in her Zeta series, are published by Wildflower Press, an imprint of Granite Publishing. For more information about Judy Carroll's work and her books, visit UFO Grey Info. Dot com, and you can view her videos on youtube.com at The Zeta Message. That's it for this week. I'm Sandy Sedgmere. Thanks for being with us today. I'll be back with another edition of what is going on at the same time next week. Till then, it's goodbye from me. And thank you, Judy Cowell. Thank you.